previously on the Infinite Escape Room. When was the last time you saw a woman on a moped? They dress up all fancy and they make the horses dance. Can I recommend exploring your colon? Again, I don't know what to do with that. Um, that, I can tell you right now, is an accident. Hello everyone out there in the big wide world. Hello and welcome to the Infinite Escape Room, the puzzling podcast where three people who were on time wait for Michael to turn up about 30 minutes late. But he's here now, so it's okay, we can press on. Thanks for making time for us, buddy. John, that there's... How are you still in that seat? How's a bolt of lightning not burst through your ceiling and turn you into a pile of ash? It's fine, Mike. We know that karma's going to bite him on the ass by the end of this, don't we? Yes. That, that fib is like, it's it's above a front to God scale. That's, um, yeah, that's quite the porker. Well, you're the one that uh, only just showed up, so here we are. I showed up for a second time, John. For a second time. I showed up earlier to see if there was a chance. The outside hope that a recording hosted by John might be starting on time. <laughs> so I'll, I'll hang around with Jane Lad for, for a while. Sort of 20 minutes late, I thought, you know what? I think there's a pretty good chance that this one's going to be starting late. And off I toddle. And I come back because I think, oh, the old pals, I do, I do love, so love to see them. And then this, this betrayal. I don't know the rest of that tune. I say, do you know the tune? I'm not familiar with the tune that you're tuning. <laughs> it will all be in the edit. I'll just use a real piano. Lovely. Hello, everyone. My name is John. Uh, I am your your punctual host for this evening, and I have a new drink in front of me. This is called Wiper and True, and it's a can of milk stout. Mm, concerningly, actually, it says milkshake stout, mm, mm, and it has the image of a space shuttle. On the can, oh, so uh, that's good, Mark. That's kind of cool. So here we go. Mm, that's grand. Yeah, that's not too bad. It's a little bit sort of veering towards diabetes in a can, but not too bad. And nice and thick and stouty. Oh, I like it. I can drink this. And locked in with me today, we have. And let's go, Jamie, Alan, and then Mike, because he turned up last. <laughs> oh, <you> unspeakable. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Jamie, and tonight I'm a little bit sleepy, so I'm currently double fisting coffee and cider. I've got the crown jewel of Aldi's booze section. It's the Orchard Irish Cider for a cheap £1.98 a bottle. It's going to turn me blind, but at this point, I don't mind. Double fisting feels like it's going to be the golden jewel of my phraseology going forward. I mean, that's <laughs> just a it's, hell of a turn. It's totally safe for work, everybody. Google it. It's fine. It's fine. Just keep your safe search on. Mm. Yeah, don't Google it, it'll work. And I'm added, and I'm drinking a lovely Rattler's Original Cider. Ooh, I'm delicious. I found in Little for one seventy nine a bottle. Hey. What? Not bad. Oh, you bastard. Anyone would think we were sponsored. <laughs> am, I not, am I the only person not actively shopping at Little right now? Uh, I, I go to Aldi, Little's evil twin with a moustache. I, I, you know, I, I forget that the two are different. It, like, they smell the same. It's like mm. left Twix, heart, right Twix. It's the same thing. Yes. It is depressing that that marketing for the Twix thing actually landed. Yeah. <laughs> wait, wait, what? Have I, have I missed some, oh, have I missed some Twix marketing? Oh, well. Twix marketing I, where it's the two brothers and like they they both have an, different ideas on how to make chocolate bars. So they, they split and one of them's like, I'm going to make this crunchy biscuit covered in chocolate. And one of them's like, well, I'm going to make this chocolate and I'm going to underlay it with crunchy biscuit. And they're totally different. And that's why Twix is coming to bars. Ah, Okay. And it works. See. It's just buried in my head. Yeah. That's an old advert as well. Yeah, it's now yeah. a core memory. <laughs> and sadly, I'm not in it. <laughs> oh, Yet. were you nearly in it then? No. Is that... <laughs> oh, okay. Is, is, is that your reaction to any advert that you're not in, John? <laughs> yeah, okay, I feel yeah. like the... Mm-hmm. Like, you know what would make this better? <laughs> Me. <laughs> well, funny enough, I do feel like I see you in most adverts, but that's because most adverts I see are the eye on this advert. Yeah, true. Like, I mean, I've seen it three times this evening. <laughs> yeah, so really? Wow. Yeah. yeah. Just but a preparation. version now where it's just you and... Um, My eyes glowing red. The... I own this. I sorry. <laughs> Why do I sound like Count Dracula? <laughs> I own this. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's a localization. They've just dubbed it over. One website. Ah, ah, ah. They're trying to capture the Welsh market, but they just didn't get a Welsh person to dub it over. Listeners, you may be wondering what the Infinite Escape Room is. Well, let me tell you. It's an escape room 
It's a free escape room that never ends. Every week on the Infinite Escape Room, one member of the team brings the room and the rest of the team bring the brains to solve it when they eventually turn up, Michael. Oh, you unspeakable. Shall I just go? Shall I just <laughs> shall I return to my original state, which was going to be not here? That'll ruin the edit. <laughs> oh, will it? What a terrible show. <laughs> then I'll just stop calling you a no-show. What? Oh, God. Oh, I hope you get hit by a train. <laughs> <laughs> So every week, a member of the team brings an escape room. This week, it's me and the rest of the team bring the brains to try and solve it. They have a very strict time limit. If they break anything, they will lose their deposit. And if they run out of time, something very terrible shall happen to them. So, gentlemen, I'm going to need a deposit, and I will let you name it. What's it going to be? Something dear to you? Something valuable? Ideally, something movable or cancelable? I know exactly what it should be. What is it? Your timekeeping skills. If you break my room, I will become less punctual. <laughs> no. I, don't know. I feel like I feel like a we've got very little to lose here. Um, like the the value of John's punctuality isn't exactly you know. There's nobody's backing a currency. It is the it. Enron of stocks and shares, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, Do you have a better one? I think punctuality is a good one. How's about all punctuality? All punctuality, yeah, but Mike, if you lose all punctuality, then you will go on a killing spree because nothing makes you angrier than other people being late. Oh, I think, okay, how's about... The stakes are pretty high about, then, so that's pretty good. <laughs> well, how, how's about how's about theatre punctuality? So going to a show and arriving on time, because there's, no, there's nothing more stressful than like feeling like you're going to be like five or ten minutes late to going to a show. Mm-hmm. Or the cinema. So, should you break anything, all theatrical shows, be they cinema or theatre or music or comedy, will start exactly on time forever with no wiggle that room sounds for great. latecomers. Ever. <laughs> and I see, John, you're describing your ideal world rather than mine here, because that sounds great to me. In fact, if the cinema could start when the cinema is supposed to start, that would be bloody brilliant. <laughs> the list, the show time should be when the adverts stop. Not. Oh, great. You're here now and you've paid us the money. Now let's, <laughs> now let's show you some material that, from other people that paid us money. Ha 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 ha. It makes me so unbelievably cross every single time. There's still time for a Coke. Like, I've got the fucking Coke. I've been sat here for the 30 coke. minutes and I'm ready to piss. I've got the, the Coke. Film. I need a wee. <laughs> <laughs> What's it going to be, chaps? I think all punctuality. I want to see Mike's killing spree if we break anything. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. I'll go for that. All punctuality is on the table here for this now quite late recording. <laughs> I also didn't introduce myself. Hi, I'm Mike, and I'm drinking a uh, a 0% ghost ship. <laughs> oh, that's a thing. Yeah, it's really good. It's like one of the best non-alcoholic beers. It's delicious. You, so I've heard you say a few non-alcoholic beers are very good now. Have you had any real turkeys? Yes, most non-alcoholic beers are shit. <laughs> oh, wow, like, so it's literally just the ones you've mentioned and said specifically this is really good. All the others are just terrible. Yeah. Oh, well. So the good non-alcoholic beers are Brewdog's Nanny State, Brewdog's Punk AF, uh, Guinness 0%, um, and Ghost Ship 0.5. Um, and that's pretty much the entire list. Wow. Um, any any mainstream lagers non-alcoholic equivalent is undrinkable piss at best and drain cleaner at worst. Ooh, wow. Okay. There goes that sponsorship deal. <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, we may lack in alcohol-free beer sponsors, or indeed beer sponsors of any kind, but we do have sponsors. They are our growing legion of Patreons out there around the globe, helping us keep the show on the metaphoric road by sending us a little uh, a little skriller every month. Thank you so much, guys, for your continued support, and thank you in particular to Charlotte Knowles and Hill Burton for hanging in there with us. Love you. Cheers, guys. Thank you. Love you. We are much obliged. Now, gentlemen, we have our deposit. Are you ready? Oh, yes. 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 In that case, it is time to enter the infinite escape room. <laughs> Last week, the team solved the case of the missing Olympic torch and escaped Trafalgar Square just in time. They followed a staircase down, down, down beneath the square until it came to a hallway. Engraved over the threshold of the hallway is an official-looking script and the words British Museum and then some Roman numerals. There's a collection of engravers' tools over to one side, along with some papers. And there's a long hallway stretching out in front of you. It is completely unlit. It's quite dark in here. 
what would you like to do? Can I look at the... In, you said there's Roman numerals on the sign. Mm-hmm. What Roman numerals are they? Okay, so uh, it says British Museum and then M-D-C-C-L-I-I-I, which I can tell you is 1753, which is the year that the British Museum was founded. M-D-C-C-L-I-I-I. L-I-I-I. Is that the same year they just suddenly discovered all that, those Egyptian and Sumerian artefacts in London? And thought, golly, we, we must exhibit these given that we already accidentally owned them and did not take them from anyone. Someone, some careless individuals left these lying around. We'd better build a fortress around them in case someone should steal them. <laughs> Look at this giant sphinx. Someone should take care of this giant sphinx. <laughs> what a ditzy bugger leaving a sphinx in London. Hey, okay, so this corridor is uh, too dark to see, this corridor? Pretty much. If you peer down it, you can see uh, there's some things on, on kind of the side of the walls at head height every now and then, and there's also what looks like a figure in a chair about halfway down the hallway on the left. I mean, we should probably approach the figure in the chair. Yeah. Let's okay. give him a howdy ho! Uh, as you... Uh, walk towards the figure you notice you're passing a large glass window uh, on your right hand side do you want to stop at the window or carry on yeah let's take a little peek inside okay it is very dark you can see some figures on the other side of the glass they're not moving uh but that's pretty much all you can make out some sort of display perhaps hmm, perhaps I, I feel like it's i feel like it's gonna be the classic caveman display i don't know why. yeah i got that vibe it's, it's, I feel like John's John's quickly scribbling out caveman <laughs> on his notes. Um, yeah, can we can we can we carry on towards um, Elgardo Sleepo? Okay, as you approach the figure in the chair, it remains perfectly motionless. You can see that it's wearing a security guard uniform, and on close inspection, it is in fact a very realistic dummy. This appears to be the result of a failed cost cutting exercise. Can we uh, have a little rifle through this dummy's pocket? See if there's anything to note. Absolutely. There are two keys in one of his pockets, one long and very old, one short and very modern. Superb. Does he have like a security badge thing? No. Does he have a hat? No. Ah, oh, man. Do, do you want to wear a hat? Yes, please. Okay, he's got a hat. Yes, I wear the hat. Okay, you wear the hat. Now I am. Do his arms come off? <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> just, just in case we need a weapon, I'm thinking. You cannot take well, his arms. Can we dismember this dummy? <laughs> <laughs> this is not. I, I, this is not <laughs> I just feel that, like I feel safer in this dark, scary museum. I think if I had a dismembered dummy arm to batter things with. <sighs> okay, you can dismember the dummy. <laughs> Was that, is, is it dismembering? Isn't dismembering like beheading? Or is, the does, that, does an arm count as a member? I, I think so. an arm counts as a member. Again, yeah. this is not what I thought I'd be discussing. So I could say, for example, that I have a three and a half foot member, technically. You technically be correct. Thinking of my right. arm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> should, we, should we keep going down this dark corridor? Yeah, that, why not? Okay, so you've taken the keys and the hat and the arm. Remember, you're proceeding further down the corridor. Uh, it's it's getting very, very dark now. You basically can't see anything in front of you at all. Oh, shit. Okay, did, if we double back to the guard, did he have like a flashlight or...? He does not. Hello, everyone. This is Editor John. You may have noticed that Albert has gone rather quiet. He actually had to leave very suddenly uh, at this point. So he now disappears mysteriously into the corridors of the British Museum, never to be seen again. Mwahaha. Right, so we've got... Roman numerals, we've got this figure, we've got the glass window. There's no source of illumination as far as we can see. Mm -hmm. And we can't see very far. Can we see any light switches or anything along the wall? No. Can we have a little bit of a feel around the walls for anything textured? Where are you feeling? Um, Just run, running the hands up and down the corridor. Just wee. As you run your hands over the window, you feel a little sort of noggin hole thing in the side of the frame. Ooh. A noggin hole. Okay, noggin hole is probably... It's a, it's a keyhole. You fit, you fit a keyhole <laughs> in the side of the frame. Ah! Oh, okay. I was going to say a noggin hole. I was going like, to put a, a hole for my head? <laughs> <laughs> I put my head through said hole. Yes, the noggin hole. It's very large and very smooth. <laughs> <laughs> James. Oh, that's my head. Yes, that's a comment about my specific head. head. Yes, it is. Um, oh. Should we try the old key in that keyhole first? It clicks open. Yay! Let's open it up and see what's inside. Are you going in? Yes. Okay. Uh, as you step 
through the window. Your eyes adjust a bit better now. There's no glass obscuring them. And you can see, as Mike correctly predicted, you are in a caveman exhibit. Uh, there are several dummies of early man holding flint weapons and they're crouched around a makeshift campfire. Okay, I've got this. This is how we're going to get illumination. So we've got flint. Let's grab a couple of bits of flint off the cavemen okay. and light the dummy arm. to <laughs> make. <laughs> wrap, wrap it in some cloth from the security guards, like trouser leg. Sorry, sorry. Not the campfire. Not the, the literal thing that is there to, to be lit. No, the arm. Now, John... Let me answer you this. What's going to be more scary to somebody jumping out of me in a museum? An arm on fire or just some bit of wood? Like, if I was a murderer, if I was a museum murderer, I'd be having second thoughts if I saw a flaming arm. <laughs> oh, Christ, he's one of us. <laughs> okay, I can't believe I'm allowing this, but are you, are you doing it? Are you setting the security guard dummy's arm on fire? Yeah, at the stump end, please. <laughs> Oh, so you can hold the hand. Like yes, yeah, so I'm holding hands. It's like I'm having like a handshake, like a friendly handshake. So it just feels... It feels so so Welcome to Mike's version of Burning Man. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> okay, you light the arm using the flint, because apparently that works, uh, and illuminate the scene. You can now see the caveman scene more clearly. It is exactly as you suspected, and you can now see into the hallway as well. Uh, those... Little outcrops on the side of the hallway wall are, in fact, uh, I'm going to try and get this word right. Is it braziers? The little sort braziers. Of braziers. Yeah, they are, in fact, braziers with unlit torches in them. Braziers are the things you put boobs in. Mm. That's it. You don't want to get that wrong, do you? Yeah. Yeah, don't say a fight of those. <laughs> Maybe that's how the burning bras thing happened. <laughs> Just a misunderstanding. <laughs> I would like this brassiere. Wait, no, no. Oh, what have you done? <laughs> Spell Someone check. Idea. The leaflet. <laughs> okay. Um, should we run up and down the corridor with a flaming arm to light all the braziers? You doing it? That sounds good. Yeah. I mean, Jamie, do you want to grab an arm, the other arm off this dummy as well? We can have an arm uh, each. Yeah, I'll rip off the other arm. Okay. As you put the burning arm to the brazier, it instantly lights. Not only that, a piece of oiled rope that was dangling into it catches and the flames rapidly follow it up into the ceiling cavity. Further along the hallway, another set of torches lights. And another. And another. The end of the hallway is now in sight. You also notice a large calendar on the wall. It reads December 20th, 2012. Oh no, the Mayans! Mayans did like an apocalypse, didn't they? Mm. Also, this is reminding me of like that kind of Tomb Raider, Lara Croft style thing. Oh, great. Where you're like, oh, oh, this is how, of course, this is how we always light the thing. We always have like a thing on a puzzle, on a, on a bit of rope, which when you burn the rope and you're like, hang on, who's resetting this every day? <laughs> who's, who's every time we need to open this door going around and putting the 30 ton boulder back at the top of the water? <laughs> and like <laughs> seven miles of oily rope. <laughs> yeah. It's a living. <laughs> <laughs> okay well, oh, gary don't... welcome to your first day of work experience at the mayan temple um, really excited to be here jeff yeah don't ask you, you're virgin by the way gary <laughs> you are okay cool um yeah so yeah we're gonna need you to reset this and then uh yeah just go for a little lie down in the break room you'll see the uh yeah the break table it's big marble kind of <laughs> looks a bit like an altar to be honest don't worry about all those uh, knives. <laughs> yeah, um, there's a trough around the edge, and that's just for all the excess beer, because boy, do we like to party <laughs> around here. Yeah. Um, anyway, yeah, you crack on with that door, and we'll see you, uh, we'll see you at the sacri- at, at, uh, nap time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, that was wonderful. What were we doing? Oh, yeah, calendar. <laughs> yeah, can we take a closer look at the calendar? Uh, but it's nothing particularly obvious. It's one of those flipping calendars, um, a bit like you'd, you'd see on like an old airport uh, announcement board where the numbers tick over very rapidly and reveal a date and it's currently saying december 20th 2012 which presumably is today's date okay are we able to interact with it at all uh, i mean you can like manually flip up the numbers but they don't stay there they just flip that down to the correct date cool i was wondering maybe flipping the year to 1755 to see what happened nothing happens ah okay dang it's not a magic calendar <laughs> <laughs> hmm, what's magic in here mm. then? I hope it wasn't the dummy. <laughs> Otherwise, it's going to be crossed. Not anymore. You, the dummy is awoken. <laughs> <laughs> John's like, he goes to punch. Oh, no. Okay. Um, okay. He tries to grab. Oh, okay. Um, is there any other. Now that we can see the corridor, um, any other doors? Or so anything? now that you can see down to the far end of the hallway, there are two doors on the far end one on the left, one on the right. The hallway then opens into a cavernous space. Okay, um, let's open the door on the left. Okay, the door won't open. 
It is held shut to buy an incongruously modern lock. Oh. We do have a modern key, don't we? We do indeed. Let's stick the sucker in. Okay. <clears throat> the door opens. As it opens, sensing motion, a fluorescent office light overhead blinks into life, revealing a collection of oil barrels. A printed out email rests on top of one of the barrels. It reads, Dear Sir, I could only apologise for the confusion regarding our latest sponsorship payment. Would you perhaps be able to accept payment in stock? Best regards, BP. <laughs> oh dear. Oh, no. There's also a trolley and a uh, cabinet on the wall with some firefighting equipment. Okay. Anything in the trolley or on the trolley? There's nothing in the trolley. On the trolley, though, someone has scrawled A plus C plus D plus C. A plus C plus D plus C. Mm -hmm. ACDC. Rock on! I was trying to think of a single ACDC song, and I couldn't. (laughs) I'm sure, like, if you played one, I'd know, but my mind's a blank. And anything, can we open up the um, the filing cabinet? Uh, it's not a filing cabinet, sorry. Oh. It's a, a wall cabinet containing a very sharp-looking fire axe. Oh. The cabinet is locked with a combination lock. It's a three-digit numerical lock. Okay. Someone has used a permanent marker to scrawl A1 on the side of the lock. Okay, I have a theory that A1 could be the A plus C plus D plus C. So mm-hmm. A equals 1. Mm-hmm. And the C and the D could be from the Roman numerals. So we just add those together. Might give us a three-digit number for that lock. So. Oh, that's clever. Maybe. No. <laughs> yeah, let's have a look and see how this bloody works. Okay, so C would be 100 and D would be 500. Mm-hmm. One, two, seven, seven, oh, one. The lock clicks open. You yeah, big oh, Jamie. Jamie. Come on. <laughs> you monster. That was incredible, Jamie. I'll be honest with you, mate. My brain just went, nope. <laughs> on that. Jamie, not only did you do that, you did that without a piece of the puzzle. Oh, um, no. So when you, when you guys walked into the hallway, I said there were some uh, like stone cutting tools off to one mm. side and some papers, and there was a guide for Roman numerals in there <laughs> to help you out with this that I have here in front of me, ready to go. And you're like, oh, no, I know my, new, my Roman numerals. I can circle back to that if you want to give it... You out. scumbag. <laughs> oh, you're getting the pity circle now. I've, I've, as well. <laughs> And there was I going there, going to go one, three, four, three, and it's going to be wrong, and I'm going to feel really clever. And James <laughs> like, no, no, it's 701. <laughs> if it was any consolation, John, I would have got one, three, four, three. I know you would have. <laughs> Why didn't you speak up? I was too busy just literally sitting here um, in awe of Jamie's incredible incredibleness. Oh, God damn it. Okay, the cabinet unlocks, uh, revealing a very sharp fire axe. I mean, if there's any consolation, this is the reason why I didn't get a girlfriend for many years. So, you know, swings and roundabouts. Just being a master Fair history nerd. Your knowledge of Roman numerals. <laughs> it's surprisingly <laughs> off-putting, Mike. I won't lie. <laughs> I, just, I love that being on, like, you know, the first date question. So, you know, how do you feel about, you know, long-term relationships, children, that kind of thing? And how, what's your knowledge on Roman numerals? And you're like, oh, that's pretty good. And they're like, oh, deal breaker. What, what I want is an absolute dunce when it comes to Roman numerals, because fuck the Roman Empire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm more of a Visigoth kind of guy. <laughs> Can you see by the way I'm dressed? And that's uh, yeah. before the Arabs came in and uh, sorted it all out. Yeah, God bless Zero. Indeed. <laughs> so we now have a shiny fire axe. You do. John. Yes. <laughs> We've got some oil, haven't we? Uh, you have some barrels of oil, yes. Excellent. Can I dip the sharp end of the fire axe in the oil, please? Uh, the oil bounce. You're not making a burning <laughs> axe. <laughs> I'm not so much adding a burnt... I'm, making, I'm adding the flame attributes to my edged weapon, that's oh, what I'm thinking. Oh, you've been playing too much Elden Ring. Um, <laughs> <laughs> right. The oil barrels are sealed. I mean, they are metal. Like You could probably like, hack in, but... but With an axe. <laughs> <laughs> God. Will I lose my deposit if I hack one of these barrels open with an axe? No. <laughs> okay, so... Uh, yeah, I'll use the axe like a kind of like an old like pen knife style tin opener and just kind of like okay, around the top oil of oil starts gushing out onto the floor. Well, my job here is done. Thank God you're not holding anything that's literally on fire right now. <laughs> Safe distance away. <laughs> Count to three. I decided that now is the perfect time to learn how to juggle. <laughs> 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 Whoops. 
<laughs> okay. Right. I'm going to I'm stepping away from the oil that's starting to pool around my feet just in case Mike drops that torch. Okay. Um what do we say torch? A burning dismembered security guard dummy hand. <laughs> okay. What are you doing? Um is the other door open or openable? The other door opens easily revealing a small room lit by I keep getting it wrong. Braziers. Braziers, not braziers. That would be a very different room. Lit by braziers. <laughs> Propped against the far wall is the unmistakable form of an Egyptian mummy entombed Ooh. in its ornate wooden case. The painted figure on the casing is quite colourful, and there is a piece of paper taped to it. Display text draft for printing. Nefenefer Oata Nefertiti, female ruler of the 18th dynasty. The depiction on the case is of the goddess Mut, the mother goddess. This is an appropriate choice, given that Nefer-Nefer-Aten mothered nine children, unusually all of which survived. It is said that those that worship the mother goddess never truly die, only sleep lightly, as mothers do, to be awoken by the call of their children. That's fabulously sinister. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Nefer-Nefer-Aten, as we all know, means beautiful, beautiful sun disk. Which is a lovely name. Does it actually? Oh, of course. <laughs> Jamie's an Egyptologist. What? What? Yeah. D- disgraced story. Egyptologist, yeah. <laughs> okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold that thought. One, how did I not know this? And I deeply regret the theme around this episode now. And <laughs> I'm loving two, it. Two, two, <laughs> disgraced? What did you do? Oh, did you, did you find a MILF mummy? It is a long story. It involves um, a month in Luxor, jacuzzi, 300 bottles of lager, a box of grenades and seven days on the no-fly list. Mucky business. I won't bore you with it. Um, and John, it's ironic that you've not heard it before because we have actually had it on the podcast before. I am just misremembering. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, the, the, whole, the whole sordid tale is much less interesting than I make it out to be. But uh... Okay. What are you doing now, guys? I mean, do we want to desecrate an Egyptian coffin with our fire axe? Uh, I tell you what, before we do, John mentioned a cavernous space. Yes. Uh, yes. the two doors earlier. Can we go and take a quick shifty shift at that? Oh, thank God. <laughs> you walk into a large domed cavern. A shallow lake covers the floor, the water only a few inches deep. In the middle of the floor, the lake rises gently to form a platform. The roof is very ornate, covered in distinctly Mayan images. There is a frantic, hellish quality to them. Stone braziers line the room. Some are lit, others are dark. As you watch, another becomes lit, and you can now make out the burning rope from earlier, making its way in a long, long spiral around the ceiling, circling towards the center and lighting torches as it goes. In the centre of the ceiling, directly above the platform, is a giant stone fist suspended by an oily rope. It is the other end of the burning rope. You've got about 17 and a half minutes until the flames reach it, and the fist falls on the platform below. Oh shit, we got an old school timer. This is going to be fun. What would you like to do? <laughs> oh no! Panic and we a little. Uh, for reference, the timer started when you lit the first torch. Oh, cool. Ah. Nice. Okay. Um... Can I have a little wade around in this water, see if I can fish anything out or anything interesting? No, it's nothing obvious. It's actually very clean. But the chlorine filter's in. Lovely. In the the side room with the Egyptian mummy, is it just the like the sarcophagus there? Is there anything else in that room? I mean, I wouldn't call it a sarc- I don't know if sarcophagus is the right term. We need an Egyptologist for this. Well, actually, I'd rather imagine it. <laughs> the wood, it's the wooden casing with the mummy inside. Hmm. Okay, cool. So it's not like a stone thing or anything, yeah. They used those for fuel at one stage, didn't they? What? Yeah, yeah. People use mummies for fuel. They used to snort, they used mummies for, they used to snort them too. Yeah, you get powdered mummy, mummy to snuff. It was a big kind of uh, medical thing for a, for a long time, and then yeah, they were people used them to power uh, like steam well, not steamboats, but um, uh, what's the word? Paddle boats, paddle steamers. They just basically like chuck some mummies because they burnt great because they were covered in these delicious hydrocarbon rich preservatives. Wow, uh, the Victorians bastards. From above you, in the cavern, a bit of paper flutters down. There's some very old tape on the top of it. It looks like it let go, disturbed by your entrance. The paper reads thus. This one reads, display text, draft for printing, Mayan sacrificial chamber. Oh, that's ironic. 
talked about that earlier. It is believed that this chamber was never actually used. It was reserved for the end time, the last day of the Mayan calendar, reckoned to be December 20th, 2012. The sacrificial ceremony involved the crushing of a live human by a giant facsimile of a fist in the centre of a burning lake. This ceremony was intended to protect the Mayan people from the wrath of their gods and usher in a new age of peace. Jamie. Yes? We have all the ingredients to make this happen. We do. Because we have a dummy... We have some oil that we could pour onto the lake and oil sits on top of water. And we have two burning arms <laughs> that we could use to ignite said. We also have a very sharp fire axe um, that we could keep. <laughs> <laughs> Spoils. <laughs> it's the British Museum way. Someone's left this fire axe laying around. Oh, mine now. <laughs> I have like a yeah, the, the fire axe uh, exhibit opening. <laughs> yeah, so let's recreate this mine sacrifice. Yeah, let's do it. So let's grab the dummy. Let's grab the security guard dummy. Oh, okay. well, will will um, the gods want a full a full body? Should we grab one of the cavemen? Oh yeah, that's a good chance. Let's do that. Yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, yeah. So yeah, we'll go back to the, the where the glass was. Uh, we'll pop in, grab a caveman from the um, the diorama, drag him back in. Stick him on the plinth. We should probably put the fire axe in his hand so he makes it look like this was all his fault. <laughs> um, then go to the office, grab a barrel of oil each, go in, pour it on top of the water. And yeah, I think um, give it a bit of the old... Yeah, it, 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 yeah ignite the old uh, the whole lake. Um, before you do that, <laughs> Michael, could you reread the last note, please? The ceremony was intended to protect the Mayan people from the wrath of their gods and usher in a new age of peace. The previous sentence, please. The sacrificial ceremony involved the crushing of a live ah. human by a giant facsimile of a fist in the centre of a burning lake. Thank you. So it has to be a live human. Correct. Okay, so the, gods are, the gods are not stupid. Let's resurrect this mummy, shall we? <laughs> and then <laughs> stick him on the plinth. Uh, so, Nefertiti Bonini Diddly Bobbly Boo. Um, <laughs> lady so she uh where was it mother of nine children all of which survived it is said that those that worship the mother goddess never truly die only sleep lightly as mothers do um so because I mean, does that mean that she's technically not dead she's just sleeping th- lightly in a kind of dry and desiccated way like a pepper army potentially yeah but less delicious or maybe more depends on your stance on pepper armies i was just about to take a sip of this beer and you said that and i'm not so sure <laughs> I mean, if it was good enough for the Victorians, they were they were a thinking people. Some of the time. Well, there's the whole, you know, everything they did. Um, okay, so to be awoken by the call of their children. So if we just stand in front of the coffin and go, Mom, Jenny hit me. <laughs> and just whinge until she comes up being like, listen, yep, you little shits. Mom, Tootin hit me again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to need to be quite clear about what you're doing here. Let's bust open the coffin. What? <laughs> There's a look of blind panic on John's face that makes me think we shouldn't do that necessarily. Um, when I said, oh, wow. <laughs> when, when you suggested, like, you know, screaming the, the, the mummy wake, and I said, I'm going to need you to be quite clear about what you're doing here, I meant specify, not go off in a completely different and violent direction. <laughs> I thought we were just exploring ways to wake her up. I figured a fire axe to the coffin would be quite... I mean, well, I don't know. Here's Maggie. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I think doing your best Jack Nicholson would... Um, yeah, that would really... You'd, I tell you what, you'd go from naught to awake very quickly. But the mummy wouldn't understand the, the reference to the Shining being dead for 3,000 years. Okay, so what you do oh, is true. you show the mummy the Shining first, yeah. and then you do it. Like, do we have enough time cool. to show the mummy the show? I mean, no. <laughs> I could put Netflix on my phone or something and <laughs> hack a small yeah. hole in the could, coffin and then pass my phone through. Because the clip on YouTube without context means nothing, so she'd, she'd have to see the whole mm. thing, so that's kind of a moot point. Okay. Um, so we could... Kind of a what point? <laughs> oh, moot. Yeah. Moot. Very good. Uh, yes, yeah, so we show moot in front of the, uh, the coffin, because that's oh, Egyptian moot. for uh, mother. As the ancient Egyptian word for mother escapes your lips, you hear... The raspiest yawn you've ever heard in your life. And the wooden case in front of you shakes a little bit as the being inside awakes. And then we... Jamie, I don't know about you, but I feel that we should destroy this medical and scientific model (laughs) with a giant Mayan fist in a 
flake of fire. I think it's it's the way that our Victorian forefathers would have wanted it to go down. Oh, we're recording this on Mother's Day. I can't smash an Egyptian mother on Mother's Day. Yes, we are. And that is very <laughs> deliberate. <laughs> okay, so we got this this mummy's awoken. Can we just sort of lead her by the hand to the sacrificial altar? Oh, she's 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 in her wooden casket still. Oh, I, th- I think we keep her in the wooden casket. I feel like I've seen enough Scooby Doo to realise that you know. <laughs> yeah, let's just. I figure let's just take the casket, yeah. and it'll be like a walnut. We'll just put it under the um, under the giant fist, and then <laughs> bosh. Cool, yeah. I'll, yes, I'll take the, okay, is that what you're doing? I'll take the head, the end of the feet. I'll take the spooky end of the head. If only you had some kind of small trolley nearby that would aid you in this... For fuck's sake. That's right, we could use the axe as a lever. <laughs> Good point, John. <laughs> <laughs> Why do I bother? <laughs> oh, it's that kind of trolley. Oh. Actually, it wouldn't matter what kind of trolley it was. A trolley's a trolley. Let's stick her on the trolley. Stick her on the trolley. Yeah, I was thinking like a shopping trolley. That would also work, though. I would, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we'll stick her on the trolley and wheel it over to the, the altar. Lovely. It's the sound effect of wheeling trolley. <laughs> to me. Lovely. Okay, your mummy <laughs> is beneath the altar. Do you have anything left to do, or are you ready? Okay, uh, let's do a quick inventory check. So we got mummy under the stone fist. We've got burning lake. Well, you haven't actually set the lake on fire yet, I imagine, because you've just been walking through it. I throw a burning arm in the lake. Should we, like... Chant or something? Yeah, well, do you, what do you want to do? You want to do the Welsh national anthem or something? Or? Uh, I don't know it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jamie, you appear to be catching fire. How did that happen? Ah, I'm not a sporty guy, so I never needed to learn it. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's just quickly check through the um, the mind sacrificial thing again. So, uh, end of time uh, sacrificial ceremony involved the crushing of a live human by a giant facility of a fist in the centre of Burning Lake. So we've got the fist is sorted. We can. We can always throw the axe or something at the rest of the uh, the rope uh, to get it to accelerate. Oh, yeah. um, the ceremony was intended to protect the mind people. Yeah, okay, I, th- I feel like we've got. I feel like we've got everything. Oh, yeah, I think so. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Lovely. Are you set? Do you want to throw the axe at the at the rope to speed this up, and then I'll chant? Yeah, I'll dunk it in the I'll dunk it in the flame. Ah, oil, beautiful. Um, and then throw the burning axe at the uh, the rope to, to speed the shot. And yeah, you get a good chant going. Oh, sorry, if we're going to do that, then surely we need to do the old Age of Empires one. Oh, la, la. Oh, la, 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 la. Oh, la, 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 la. That was how priests converted units in the original Age of Empires. Ah, they that literally is... stood, so they're going, oh, la, la. That is beautiful. I love it. <laughs> As the flaming axe severs the rope, the fist falls, crushing the mummy beneath. There is a loud yelp of pain, and then all of the torchlights go out. As the dust settles, a tiny pinprick of light is now visible above you. There is a bumbling, faraway voice. Posh. Foolish. Horny. (laughs) Freedom! Tyranny! World beating! (laughs) That's a really good impression. And a scrunched up bit of paper falls down from the hole above. It drops into the burning lake and unfolds as the fire catches it. You can clearly see the word Brexit written upon it. The paper burns easily, but the words do not. They melt instead into the lake, and it immediately begins to smell of sulphur. (laughs) You hear a sudden clattering. The calendar at the other end of the hallway has a new date on it. 23rd of June, 2016. Whoops. (laughs) <laughs> beautiful oh that's wonderful oh i love that. brexit poisons the, <laughs> the salvation from the apocalypse just a, oh that's excellent avert apocalypse after apocalypse that's wonderful ah that was good fun john oh that is that is great that's a nice and that's a good handover actually for the puzzle that i've uh started working ah, on excellent. So I, can, uh, I can use that it's going to be in a flat roof boozer what? Oh, um, God. <laughs> yeah, oh no! <laughs> yeah, with Nigel Farage as guest speaker. Oh, that would be great. Yeah, you're having to kill Nigel Farage at the end to avert the apocalypse. To avert Brexit. <laughs> yes, the new apocalypse. It's yours. Take oh, it. Brilliant. Oh, great. I think. Okay, I know what's happening. In the dogfighting arena. Now. Excellent. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Uh, oh, that was, yeah, that was a good one, mate. That was a really yeah, good really one. For something that you um, you came up in with uh, in oh. between the time that the recording was supposed to start and the time you arrived, I thought it was fun. <laughs> mm, thank you. I did have to wait for half an hour before you showed up, so, you know, it gave me time to write. You goddamn son of a bitch! <laughs> the listeners will never know the truth.
Indeed. <laughs> oh, God damn. Oh, why can't I be the editor? <laughs> uh, that was no, really no, fun. Good fun. I, oh, man, I as always the the sort of the bit you thought was going to be hard was not like I thought the hard bit was going to be the code to get into the fire axe. I thought I'd obfuscated that beautifully and made it nice and difficult and put the Roman numerals nice and far away so they're relevant but they're not too close to this. And James just goes, "Oh yeah, it's a seven oh one. What do we need the axe for apart from opening the oil barrels? Opening the oil barrels. I wasn't going to let you. I, I did think you could try it with a flint, but I'll just say it isn't sharp enough. That was mm. the only way you were going to be able to get the oil out nice gotcha um, just i thought because i thought i'd done a goof with that i didn't realize that i was actually being no no, no that, that was super smart that was, that was exactly yeah. what was supposed to happen i mean i hadn't thought of you like making the fuck the flamey axe to end the puzzle early that was cool uh but uh that was the intended way to open up the oil barrels oh, excellent and by the way bp were are uh, were genuinely the sponsor of the british museum oh wow <laughs> Jesus. Well, with all that spare money they've got right now, with uh, mm, with the energy price through the roof, mm-hmm. they are creaming it in. They are loving kind it. Kind of ironic that the British Museum, famous for taking things that don't belong to them, sponsored by BP, famous for leaving things that do belong to them in places where they shouldn't. Mm. <laughs> so they're going to use several million gallons of oil, you bastard. <laughs> Mm. That, is, that is deliciously and spicy. They definitely do need those um, those tax breaks for decommissioning oil rigs too, because um, that 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 shouldn't come out of the profits. That should come out of the public purse. Yeah, that's definitely that's definitely fair. I mean, I can't see a single flaw in that plan. Yeah, it's so it's so hard to make a dime out of public oil. <laughs> oh, how long do we have left? Um, so you you had. Did I stop it? Yeah, you you had three and a half minutes left. Ooh. Though to be honest, you, there was a fair bit of of goings on before you lit the torch. Uh, that took a bit longer than I thought it was going to. So I think I think you were at the actual full length puzzle was just over half an hour. Oh, um, cool. But uh, I decided that the 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 um the timer element would be when you lit the first torch. Nice, seems fair. And I enjoyed the enjoyed the bit about who resets this. Whose <laughs> job is it to make this happen? But every time someone comes down here, <laughs> yeah, I didn't realize I'd accidentally predicted the human sacrifice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, no, you, like you, you called most of the puzzle quite early. <laughs> ah, John's got a caveman in here. John's got a human sacrifice in here. <laughs> Thanks for listening, everyone. We hope you've enjoyed this episode of the Infinite Escape Room. We certainly did. If you like this sort of thing, we have quite an extensive back catalogue now of about 200 previous episodes. You can find them on our website, www.theinfiniteescaperoom.com. And you can also find us, notionally at least, actually now Jamie's with us, much less notionally, much more really, because he sits there at his computer waiting for you day after day after All day, day after day. He's ready for you, baby. <laughs> Bring him a message. We are on the various social media channels, Twitter and instagram and whatnot at at tier underscore podcast that's tier as in the tier of a cake not the tears that you cry out your eyes after waiting for the people to turn up for the show for half an hour michael we love you lots and we'll see you next time on the infinite escape room bye-bye bye-bye bye